What is it? Shit. Hello and welcome to this video by Michael and Emil uh, from Mediology Copenhagen. We have chosen a uh, tune shader or cell shader uh, for, for this uh, programming exercise. And um, generally there are three things to consider with the tune shader. That is um, three main components. Uh, the diffuse shading needs to be represented by uh, two values, uh, one for the light areas and one for the uh, one for the darker areas. Um, then we need to have a specular highlight that is um, sufficiently high, so a lot of uh, intensity, and also as with the diffuse shading, only a single color. And then we need to have a outline. So here's our scene. The tune shader scene, and what we aim to do was uh, making something that was like the tune shader, which is built into Unity, but still is uh, slightly different because what they have uh, made as a built-in shader in Unity is not that good. We think we have the built-in Unity shader here, and this one over here is then our edition of tune shadering. Uh, first one thing uh, you probably notice is the reflection of this uh, specular light that is not present in the Unity standard shader. As you can see it follows around like a real uh, reflection should do. And um, one of the things the Unity shader does is actually using a, uh, a ramp uh, texture a tool texture. So this light you see is actually a, a texture that is applied to the to the to the object. You can see it down here. So it's it is not actually a a light effect. One other thing is uh, the the outline. Unity's default outline is as we can see here not that great. It's very intense when you get very far away from the object. It's, it, don't don't stay the same uh, size or thickness. What to say? So and the reason for that is that uh, that is the normal way of making outlines is that you take all the surfaces that we cannot see. You take a copy of the object and then expand all the surfaces we cannot see along to its uh, normal vectors. So uh, so that uh, and then paint it black. So we get an outline. So it's actually the surfaces behind. Uh behind the object that uh, yeah we can see excluded. much clearer much clearer here up here we have a button and we can see that the faces we cannot see are expanded along the normals to make this the effect is of course uh, it is at some points and from some angles it's very powerful like in here but uh, but Along all the the edges, it don't seem to to work that well. If I can get this one to appear, we can see that our idle outline is. If it is too thick, it will paint uh, most of uh, the object black. But uh, it works very well at uh, the edges close to the camera, but not inside uh, the object itself. So, of course, uh, one of the obvious differences is that we have a specularity on our object and uh, the Unity standard, Unity shader, doesn't. Um, it is, though, a very, uh, very well-used uh, shader. Uh, for example, Borderlands uh, are using that, that same uh, type of shader. But uh, worth mentioning uh, for, for our type of shader, I'm pretty sure that uh, Telltale games uh, with the, the Wolf Among Us and um, the Walking Dead series, uh, they have a specularity and this kind of, of, of texture that we use. And it makes some very great dynamics to, uh, to the, the picture action. So, if we uh, go to the code itself, what we chose to implement was uh, that you can change the yeah when the shadow should appear the threshold of of that, and that is also actually the 
the thre sort of the threshold between uh, the diffuse material. Instead of having this uh, gradient of the normal uh, specular diffuse map, you see here. Let me turn this thing around. Yeah. Uh, it has to be a very clear edge. So between two colors. As we can see here, we have uh, an unlit color, that is uh, the shadow, and we have the diffuse material color. So uh, that is actually what we we are, yeah, uh, panning forth and back uh, between those uh, where, where the threshold should be. And then we, of course, has uh, this uh, specular material color, which should be white to get this uh, reflection, and that is the same. Thing we do there, expanding the how much is reflected. Mm -hmm. And Maybe. the outline thickness, uh, we'll get back to that uh, in the code. And that is also yeah. one of the differences between the Unity shader and uh, our shader is that it actually goes inwards uh, on the mesh or on the object, whereas the, as Michael said before, the Unity shader, the Faces that turns away are extruded and turn black. Yeah, that's the, why only, the only thing that, that is uh, not that great with uh, this uh, solution is that from some angles, as you can see here, most of the uh, or the outline will be very thick, and most of the, the figure will be painted. Uh, as you can see here, that is the outline. So that is not function perfectly, but you can argument for it's just a heavy shadow. And the first thing we notice in our shader is the, the properties, and that is uh, the things that Michael explained before. Uh, the color, the, the threshold, etc. Um, and we give it a name, a diffuse material color that is displayed on, on Unity, and then a color and a default setting. In this, uh, in this case, with the diffuse threshold, we have the range instead of the, the color that it goes from minus 1.1 .1 to 1 and the default setting is 0 0.1 and that's pretty much it, the main tag, we'll get back to that later so the shader itself starts here and what is uh, important is that we get these uh, variables into Unity and that we uh, get uh, things defined, as we can see here we have the struct vertex input that is uh, the inputs uh, that are uh, that we are using to, uh, to actually uh, make Unity understand what, what is going on. Uh, we have uh, down here uh, the output and uh, as we can see this is uh, for example the light direction and the view direction we, we, we get those informations uh, so we can, can use them in our code. And if we scroll down we get to the vertex output vert, which we declared earlier um, and that is basically um, deciding how the the light should behave with our mesh, or rather how the mesh or our shader should respond to the world light. Um, <coughs> and we do that by, at first uh, we have the output normal direction, where we multiply the flip 4 input normal, and the world to object, which is the inverse model matrix, uh, to transform the normals from objects to the world space. And when we normalize that, we get a normal direction unit vector. And uh, for the world position, um, let's see, uh, that is basically what, uh, what it says. We multiply the, the object to world uh, with the input vertex, uh, and it transforms a local space position into world space. Um, and the view matrix is actually the inverse transform of the camera and thus it uh, transforms the world space position into the camera's local space uh, and I think the projection matrix uh, is a 3D to 2D mapping and it can be either in perspective or orthographic way And for the view direction, uh, which is also uh, basically 
pretty simple. We take the world space camera position. That is the camera, of the, the, the position of the camera, and minus the position of the world, which gives us a vector from the object to the camera, and then we normalize it to get as a, as a unit vector. And uh, finally, we uh, calculate the, the light direction uh, depending on whether it is a directional light or point light. And that we do by using the, the LERP operator, which uh, basically interpolates the, the, world's, uh, the world space position and the fragment light source. And the world space light source, uh, light position. And uh, ultimately, the vertex program deals with everything in uh, one vertex per frame. And uh, we use that to define the vertex input struct as a base. And we then write to our vertex output, uh, and ultimately the program uh, returns the vertex output to use in the fragment shader. Down here we have the, the fragment shader, and that is uh, where all the magic happens. That is where we decide how the, uh, how the light should interact with our object. And uh, the, the first thing we see is the, the n.l, which is the dot product between the, the normal direction uh, vector and the light director, uh, the light direction vector. And we already uh, normalized those, uh, so those are now uh, unit vectors. And we dot them. Um. Yeah, we basically just saturate the, the dot product, so we, uh, we get, no, no matter what we get here, we will uh, make it a range from 0 to 1, that is what saturate means. So, and that's uh, that uh, variable here is now equal to the dot product of, of these two variables. So when we have a diffuse cutoff, <coughs> which is, as we can see in our uh, in our game view here, scene view, that is uh, what happens when I think we can get a better, better one. That is what happens here. There it was. So we actually can change when this shadow appears and we do that by uh, changing the max value of this so we have this uh, threshold value which is set to 0 0.1 by default and the reason why we uh, we multiply it by a thousand in the end that is because well, we want this sharp edge to appear not being blurry like uh, Unity's uh, it, it, this is much more cartoony style to have this sharp edge, hard edge. This one is the specular cutoff. That is as before, but just the specular, the white one here we can expand and make smaller. And that is basically the same, but right here we have a reflection function. And all it does is that it takes in the input of the directional light and also the normal, uh, the the normal uh, the the no, what is called the, the yeah the normal vector of the normal uh, direction yeah the normal direction vector. vector exactly, and the reason why we have this minus in front is because that normally light comes from above, and hits a surface and go out according to the the normal direction. But we want the opposite. We want the, the reverse matrix. Yeah, the reverse matrix actually. So, uh, and uh, this is so the other uh, uh, parameter that we use in this uh, equation, this reflection equation that uh, deals with the camera's view, so that uh, we can change, we actually get the information, uh, I've shown that earlier, that we get the information into uh, from Unity so that we can calculate where the camera is according to the reflection. As we can see, it moves around and the shadow doesn't so that is the, the difference between those two mainly and again we multiply by a thousand to get a sharp hard edge and down here we calculate the outlines uh, with the outline strength and we do that by uh, by dotting the input normal direction vector with the input uh, view direction vector and we do that because we need it to follow the camera around. So no matter where, no matter where we go, it's always the edges that are, are painted black. And then we minus with the outline thickness. 
and that basically gives us that more uh, more faces uh, the the dot product of more faces are zero and are hence painted black. So down here we have the ambient light. Uh, it is a sort of a general illumination of the scene, uh, which is added to the scene. It doesn't affect uh, the mesh. We can't um, play with the values on, uh, other than in, in this uh, this line here. And it takes uh, one minus the diffuse cutoff. So if the diffuse cutoff is is one, we have a a value of zero times with the unlit color. And that will of course be zero and makes it more dark. So the diffuse cutoff is uh, at the moment what value? 0 0.1, I think. 0 0.1. So we have a little bit of ambient illumination. If we. Oh, what? Hello? Yeah. So if we delete that and go to Unity, we you can, can see, see that it's very, very dark, entirely black. The value of zero. And that is the reason why we use this times unlit color because unlit color is set to gray. And that is actually the same down here, just to, with the specular reflection that we can change it down here. So one minus one times, uh, yeah, will of course be zero, and none color will be applied. But one minus zero point one will give us a value, and that will be multiplied by this color we have chosen in the field up here. What we also did was uh, apply a texture to the to the object, and um, that's where we get back to the the UV at the top, at the main tech of the AK forty seven applied to the to the shader. And that looks like this. And we can turn the lighting threshold a bit back to have more uh, of the texture uh, visible on the on the mesh. So eventually that looks pretty good and we are very satisfied with the result. One drawback is however that uh, the outlines disappear when adding the, the texture to the, to the, to the shader. Uh, that's one way to, to further develop our, our shader to make it better. But uh, otherwise we think we did a good job. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.